My name is uh, Nyong Julius. I'm a graduate of Makerere University. I graduated in 2014. I did a Bachelor of Science in Chemistry, Botany and Pharmacology. But before I graduated, I decided to create jobs for myself. I, I, I said jobs because research gives you a lot of ideas. And those ideas, you cannot push one idea. You can reserve them before you put them out on the market, but at least you know that you have your idea. So I decided to come up with this project of adding value to our local available resources. And the, 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 the plants I looked at, or the resources I looked at were plants. And those plants are those ones in nature, the plants surrounding us. We bypass them every day, you look at them, but you don't know the potential. Um, but these plants are very, very wonderful and they have a lot of value. And the most specific plants I looked at are those ones which concern our health or contribute to our well-being. I looked at a plant like stevia. Uh, if uh, people have read, stevia is a wonder plant. It's more, more, more profitable than any other business because today everyone eats something sweet. And that something sweet involves the sugar. And this is a plant which can substitute sugar without even increasing your sugar levels. It is cholesterol free, calorie free, cal cal calorie -free, free I mean that it doesn't have any excess kilo juice that adds to your body. That means that if you take it and you know weight management regime, yeah, it cannot contribute to any additional kilos. What makes me unique is the way I add value to my uh, salon. Simple things, I add, the way I add value to simple things. As most people look at, for example, eucalyptus. There's a eucalyptus plantation in our background. Most people look at it as a source of poles for selling to Meme guys, electric lines. But for me, I've extracted perfumes from the leaves of this plant without even uh, endangering the plant itself. Because the excess leaves I get from them, they, they, don't, they do not affect the growth of the plant. So I've made tea leaves out of that eucalyptus. I've made the uh, aromatherapy grade oil for using for using massage. I can say I have two products, though they, they, they are in various forms, because it's one thing, it's a product, but you play around with it. The eucalyptus oil, I've, I can play around with it by producing scents and also produce um, products, uh, consumable products. I can also use it to perfume, uh, like other non-living things like cars, bathrooms, rooms. It's one product that I'm bringing around with it for today-to-day -day use of an ordinary person. I employ uh, villagers, I empower them by buying the leaves from them, and also I set up gardens for myself to ensure sustainability of, the, of my project. So I buy from the, uh, the people, the, the farmers, and I also set up farms for myself. My future plan is to see that Africa is socially empowered uh, by using its own resources. We have uh, a vast number of resources, but we have not added value to them. We lack skills. I want to empower a new generation of thinkers, fellow youth, so that they can also come up and take up the mantle and begin to produce products from their surroundings. Because that's the only way to reduce the trade deficit we are experiencing in Africa. We have resources, but we lack the potential to, 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 to make business out of those resources. The challenges are many, but let me point out the main one. The main one is people despise African make. They despise products made in Africa. They think they are already substandard. Because, for example, I've talked about eucalyptus. I have... Uh, Foreigners who buy the oil from me, they take it back and bring it here in different forms. I've seen a friend of mine doing that. But if you sell it here, the people say like, no, Ugandan, if they buy the oil, give you a lot of money for that particular product. So we don't embrace our own. Uh, the measures I put there is to uh, upscale and bring um, my production to the standards of the Western people. Now, if you look at the products I'm producing, these are the products produced by big multinationals like uh, uh, Essential Oils Inc., Monsanto, 
those are big multinational companies, but I'm also uh, forging ways here in Uganda to see that I reach their standard. Now I've managed. I'm not yet there in terms of publicity and branding, but at least I have the content. If they bring their product and I put mine here, you cannot even identify the difference. When I began, I won an award uh, from KCCA, the award is here in my office, and I've given uh, jobs to about 20 youths. I'm working with 20 youths now, and I pay them very well. That means that the project is able to pay uh, its, our, its workers. And I've traveled the world. I was invited by the UA in different um, uh, conferences, and I was able to represent Uganda. So I see the, the, the project has given me exposure. And if you talk about Nyan's Julius, someone will say, hey, the stevia guy or the aroma guy, at least that makes me proud. And I've also featured in papers, like uh, a new vision came here and gave me publicity. They came and uh, acknowledged my works and they wrote about them. At least I'm grateful. I can't quantify the impact, but at least I say people have appreciated the works. People, for example, used to look at uh, uh, Stevia as a foreign thing. Because Stevia came in in a processed form. But when I showed them the plant, that this is the green sugar substitute, it is zero, it is healthy, people were like, is it possible? Until when they tested the leaves. Uh, people have liked the idea, and uh, most of them have become my outgrowers. So I'm giving them business, they, they go, they plant these uh, seedlings, and then they bring to me a process. The other impact has been that uh, people have gotten enlightenment. Okay? Because ignorance is the biggest disease in Africa. People don't know. At least people now are enlightened. Like, oh, some things like this. So that has also made me proud. You know the problem here in Africa, we want to do complicated things. That's the mentality we have. That you, if you want to do something, you want to do it at a standard of company X. But that company X has been in existence for 40 years. For you, you don't have any exposure to factors of production, any money. So, may I say, let me begin simple by first selling, for example, the stevia seedlings. Because I'm uh, the seedlings and I acquired the knowledge. Uh, from my A level, simple biology, simple biology of tissue culture, of multiplying, cuttings, and the like. So I said, let me use that theory to multiply the seedlings. From there, I sold the seedlings to people. Then I got money. From the money, I, 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 I leased out land, and also my grandfather provided me with a piece of land. So I kept on uh, scaling up my production. As I sell seedlings, I, I also set up my farm. If I knew it, I started processing the powder, the, the leaves into powder. And uh, I didn't look at grinding for starters. I borrowed uh, a mortar and a pistol from my mother, the chino, the local, the, the, the local chino. Started making powder, I went to Mulago, I talked to doctors like this here, look, we have a product here, it's natural, here it's this seedling where it comes from, but diabetic people need it. And the doctors were um, understanding, they pushed me. I started selling the, 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 the product to the diabetic people and those diabetic people would communicate to other people. Then I got business. Then I began uh, mushroom growing. Because mushroom growing needed reagents, uh, reagents like uh, culture reagents. Well, these, these are kind of technical, but those are reagents used to multiply the mushrooms. So I was able to afford, because I, was, I had gotten some money and I had saved, then I began also making mushroom seeds, uh, teach farmers, train them how to go about the whole idea. But the challenge I experienced with the mushroom project, Ugandans still have this mentality there. Local mushrooms in the wild. Mushrooms are very important. They have many nutrition. I've written about mushroom nutrition and medicinal properties. But I needed a concerted effort, like a combined effort from all stakeholders to push it forward. So when you come up with a project, uh, you have to come up full swing. Don't do it in bits. Because given the fact that mushrooms have a short lifespan, uh, they get spoiled very quickly. I had to innovate ways of adding value to them. So I, I, dropped, I developed a dryer system. Then I began making simple dryers for my farmers. A few farmers I had trained. 
some of them are now drying using those simple dryers. Oh, I'm very young because I have this philosophy, all this thinking that great ideas are always driven by, or are always uh, pushed by young people. If you look at uh, things like Facebook, uh, email, all those Gmails, the young people are coming up with this. But yes, things are not easy. It has not also been an easy road for me. But I think you have to stay focused. Stay focused, focused and keep it simple. Don't complicate things. If you, you don't have a job, acknowledge it that you don't have a job. And begin somewhere. For example, if your mom is doing a certain business, you can add up a value to that business. If, for example, she's selling clothes, you can come up with an e platform where can, whereby you can market your mother's clothes. Hmm? Before you know it, customers come in and your mom can give you a bonus. Me, what I did was like, let me be honest. Because when you're honest, the, the, the elders will always trust you. Because people here, young people, waste money. If you get 100,000, you want to eat it all. You go, you club, you spend it. You save. You can spend 20 and save the 80. The, because money loses value every day. 100,000 can buy something today, a phone, but tomorrow it will not buy it. Money keeps on losing value. So make sure that money is spent wisely. I began my campaign in 2013. Uh, while I was still at university because I graduated in 2014. But I said, okay, let me also come up with a, a community-based organization, a form of an NGO to, to empower people who don't have the resources or the abilities. So I began with them by making them grow my plants. They plant them and I get them from them through that mutual understanding, community empowerment. Then I process it. And I sell them to foreigners here because they like natural things a lot. I sell at the American embassy, I have an outlet there. International schools, I sell all my products there. And also, I opened up, I opened up a shop in town at Equatorial Mall, Shop 152. And also, I make sure that I'm part of each and every exhibition in Uganda. This type of business I'm doing is, I, could, I can say it is a bio business. It's a bioscience business. In that, um, nature keeps on changing, uh, reagents keep on changing. I can't say the exact amount that I need this, but at least I have a range. Mm -hmm. That uh, 20,000 US dollars, I can use them in the market. I market this so that the whole of the Africans know about this particular business.